Hello and welcome to Free Kick. The FIFA World Cup Brazil is now heading towards the quarterfinal stage and we are here to celebrate the greatest show on the earth. Uh, we have here in our studio Brahmanan Shankwarkar, the former India goalkeeper and one of Goa's uh, two Arjuna awardees, the other being Bruno Coutinho. We also have with us the current Indian international defender. Uh, Danzil Franco here with us. Danzil Franco is known as one of the best right backs in the country right now. Welcome to uh, both of you to our studio in this program which is titled as Free Kick. Let us begin this show with uh, this graphic. <laughs> Brazil, Netherlands, Colombia, Costa Rica, France, Argentina, Germany, and Belgium. Hatutlan tuka kanchi surprise samki ashi surprise package team kanchi dista? Which has entered the quarterfinals? I think Costa Rica. There have been 56 matches and 8 matches to go, in all 64 matches at the World Cup. These are the few talking points. There have been the highest number of goals that have been scored at the group stages. Precisely 136 goals have been scored in 48 matches. Plus, we have seen an overall rise in the standard of goalkeeping. So, we have this highest number of goals on one side and generally a great goalkeeping or rather improved goalkeeping on the other side. So, what does uh, this uh, stat tell us, Pramanan? Uh, I feel that uh, errors, one simple error, I think none of the strikers has uh, let off anybody. Mm. There's one of the reasons goals came in and there was always neck of scoring that was there, despite choke defence also. Mm. Whatever may be, goalkeepers also played so well, especially for Nigeria. One small error, nobody left him, the ball was entered the net. I think that was with France. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think th this time, despite even whatever it is, the strikers did their best to see that the uh, goals are pumped. Like lots of strikes towards goals, plenty of strikes. That's so, uh, we have seen uh, what can be called as uh, improved finishing as well, great finishing skills here. Yes, I would say that because uh, the class what the attacking players have showed in the World Cup is out of, out of my mind, I can say, because, you know, it's, it's too good. Uh, the finishing touches, the it's it's class, mm -hmm. and uh, no matter how crowded the defense is, it has been proved by the attackers, by the strikers that they have uh, scored class goals. Right. So that's. Uh, we also have seen uh, the defending champions, Spain. Uh, uh, they have just floundered. I mean, it was just not thinkable that they would go out in such a way that they have gone out. So, do you think it is the end of uh, Spanish era? I don't think so. I think it's the battle of uh, the last World Cup when Holland uh, lost to Spain. Uh, that was sort of a revenge. Mm. That was a moment, you know, the heated things inside mm. your body is the boiling. They were boiling Holland. Mm. If I think Spain had not to meet them in the very first round, mm. probably things would have been different. Spanish football is not over. To me, it's not over. Yeah. Spanish national team football will bounce back. Uh, national yeah. football team will bounce back. You yeah, 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 yeah. I'm confident mm. about it. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, do you this? I would go Sarabari, what Sir has said, mm. it's, it's true. Mm. And then adds another thing is uh, the World Cup uh, champions le, last, last World oh, Cup. So they came with the added pressure on their, 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 their heads that they me a tournament like you know with a uh, great expectations. Mm -hmm. so and playing against the Netherlands was a big big match for them and it was a debate. So it could have been a different picture had they not met the Netherlands in the first round itself. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. it could have been. It could All right. Have been. Uh, there are some uh, instances where the big name players or the very famous players have sort of disgraced themselves. And you don't want to see such disgraced uh, players at the biggest stage because the youngsters out there and watching the World Cup, they kind of, you know, uh, watch these players and uh, at the highest level and what they are going to learn from that. Uh, particularly, there is an instance uh, where uh, Uruguay star uh, Luis Suarez has uh, bitten a player again. I mean, he has done it in the league, but at the World Cup, he has done it again. Uh, what do you have to say about Luis Suarez's act? Uh, it's very hard, actually. It's not, it's not the way a sportsman should be. But uh, I would say, when you're on the field, you know, as a current player, I feel, you know, when you're on the field, you can that you... Uh, you are on that high bl blood thing, you know, mm. you are just going and giving your best and then suddenly you are into some action and you just 
get to calm down. But ah. you realize it later on, like you know that what has happened was not right. So I feel Luis Suarez, what he did was not right, and he should look up that kids are looking at him. The way he's playing, because he's the national hero of uh, Uruguay, Uruguay. Yeah? so he needs to look at it in such a way that he's been looked after by kids who will want to follow Luis Suarez. So he should yeah. try to be in his way. Yeah, Brahmanan, a uh, player who is very skillful, 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 and I am a player who is not a white person, who is not a white person. a possibility that Luis Suarez may be just remembered as a biter. That's a player. He is a good person. He is a good person. He is a good person. So, what is about Luis Suarez's temperament? Because he is a young player. He has got a long way to go. What is the improvement? I think after this is the third incident of his, which has been known and seen. But uh, now he has given a statement. Mm. I will never do this. I'm sorry. Sorry, It's the first time I think he said it. He must have realized it. But the thing is that that moment when the head is so high, I don't know if the player has said something to him. Like as he said, Zidane. 2006. Yeah, most gentleman footballer. Oh. And he goes and hits on him because he, finally that opponent has confessed what he exactly has said to him. Some mm. bad word or something. Mm. The player hit it, my entire satan now. All for the game, mm. not for the man. But Suarez may be a habit of it. I think he should change it. Mm. That moment, God alone knows what has happened to him, but mm. the player like him should never take such a action in future because uh, it's not good for football. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of uh, big name players who came in to this World Cup with a lot of uh, weight of expectation from their country. As uh, we have discussed here, Spain uh, had uh, players who had a lot of expectation on their shoulders. But their captain, Iker Casillas, who had led them to uh, triumphs in three major tournaments before coming to uh, Brazil uh, for the World Cup. He had uh, a, a horrible World Cup. In fact, uh, the returns were horrible for him. The reputation that he had made, made over the last 14 years has just uh, crumbled because he considered a lot of goals and it was humiliating for him. Uh, you being a tremendous goalkeeper uh, that India have produced, uh, what do you think uh, Kasiyas uh, must be thinking right now? Is it a uh, good idea for him to hang up his boots and retire from football? I don't think so. That one match has made a difference. I mean the downside. Mm. But you cannot forget what was two months back he was. And to look at it, goalkeepers can play for very long. Mm. What he has to see that his eyesight and fitness, forget everything, start a fresh game, I think he'll be there for the next World Cup because the experience is very, very important. And this may be a big lesson for him to see that every match he plays, I will, I will be going to avoid all such incidents. It's not his team which has lost, mm. not Cassius. Mm. For me, it's the team which has lost. So Cassius can come back. Like Zinos of at 42 can hold a World Cup. But in one tournament, it was a wide experience. You know, it goal considered kelate. It will be in the back of his mind. So how hard it will be for him to forget all about all uh, yeah. these things, and how can he bounce back? What he needs to do now? If he if he goes back with his thoughts backward, he cannot come forward. Mm. He has to say is a is an example to me. He has to go ahead mm. with that example. He'll be more alert, more more. You know, he will be fearless. Mm. He got to go ahead, I'm telling you. He should have a very strong mind. The weak mind will go backward, the strong mind will go forward. And I'm confident that he should be playing forward, yeah. Right. Even Steven Gerrard came into this World Cup with a lot of uh, expectation, especially because we are fed on a regular diet of English Premier League. And we have all seen how uh, Steven Gerrard performs in the midfield for Liverpool. Uh, Denzel, what do you feel uh, Steven Gerrard needs to do? He, he has had a horrible World Cup. In fact, uh, he provided that assist to Luis Suarez and Suarez scored the goal for Uruguay that knocked England out. So, uh, Gerard, what, what do you feel uh, he, he can do now? I would start with, you know, every sportsman has his ups and downs. So, in this World Cup, Steven Gerald has low uh, downs and you can say that's just a phase. I mean, he will move out of it. I mean, uh, he has to work on it, uh, the situations where he had to, where he didn't uh, de do really good in the World Cup. So. I feel he's a great character and uh, he will get back in the English Premier League and perform the way he's been performing for Liverpool. These are our uh, quarter-finals matchups uh, on July 4. Uh, France will take on uh, Germany and uh, that match will be followed by Brazil versus Colombia. And on uh, 5th of July, we have uh, Argentina taking on Belgium 
and uh, then uh, followed by the Netherlands versus uh, Costa Rica. We all uh, look forward to those matchups. Let's now see the uh, stats of uh, the teams, how the teams have performed and which teams have made uh, headlines here. So here you are. Uh, this tells us that uh, Netherlands have been uh, the highest uh, scoring team so far. They have scored uh, 12 goals and uh, Germany they have uh, been most efficient uh, passing team, uh, 2,560 passes. And uh, Belgium have uh, been the most attacking team, 81 attempts. Guys, Belgium making the uh, headlines for being the most attacking team. So, uh, you have seen Belgium here and uh, what is your observation about that team? Do you like the way they played football? Yeah, yeah, they are totally focused in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, very, very serious team, Belgium. Mm -hmm. Let's now uh, check out the player's stats. Here you are, uh, the most impressive player there on the top uh, left corner of your screen. James Rodriguez of Colombia, the 22-year-old attacking midfielder. He plays his football for Monaco in League One. He has scored uh, five goals uh, from his 15 attempts. And then uh, you see the American uh, Michael Bradley, the midfielder. He has covered a whopping distance of 54 kilometers. This is a uh, distance put together from all the matches so far. Of course, USA are now out. Then we look at the bottom left corner here, Javier Mascarano of uh, Argentina. He has the highest uh, rate for completing the passes. So it's a fantastic performance by Javier Mascherano. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the goalkeeping standards have been amazing. And how can we not have a goalkeeper in this uh, team uh, or rather the player stats? Uh, Kaylor Navas of uh, Costa Rica, he has the highest percentage for uh, goalkeeping saves. So, uh, tremendous uh, performance there by Costa Rica and uh, Kaylor Navas in particular. It's time now to take a short break. When we come back, we will discuss in depth about the uh, upcoming quarterfinals and we will have uh, Brahmanan and Denzil here with us uh, even after the break. Mm -hmm. 